I just like contributing a little bit to the world if I can. So the composting helps with that. And it's just something fun to do, like the plants and taking care of those. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that my husband and I went up to the mountains in April and got ourselves some soil because we wanted to start to grow our own veggies at home. And well, we got a box for that and started planting. We planted some flowers and then some vegetables and well that was no problem but then we knew we were gonna go leave for a trip and we had nobody to water it but we left and came back from our trip and everything was fine nothing had died and we were even able to get our first bean harvest which was really exciting of course the beans from being like this tall and like the plant itself, when I left, they are now producing beans. The only problem was that the weather was getting warmer and we had to go on more trips. So rest in peace, dear windowsill garden. But I went to Beijing to meet up with another couple who, although they also had problems due to trips, they have had a better success than me. My name is Yvonne. I'm originally from the Netherlands, but I've living in, I have been living in China for six, no, not six years, nine years already. Um, you may know me from my YouTube channel, Go Yvonne, or from the channel I have with my husband, Trip Bitten. And we live here in Beijing, in, one of, in this compound, and we have a little garden that we started in spring. So here is a small part of the garden and a cat area. Uh, I have here two tomato plants. The one is like really sad looking, has a few tomatoes left, but um, yeah, it's kind of dying. But here we have a newer plant and it's starting to flower. And it got really tall over the summer. It's starting to have flowers and hopefully we also are going to have some tomatoes, but I'm not sure because the weather is changing. And then I also have a really out of control pumpkin plant growing. <laughs> So we have the pot with the two pumpkin plants and then it goes all the way around our railing, our curtain railing and yeah, it's just super long. This is the bigger part of the garden and I'm really excited about this because we have a cucumber plant that I got from uh, one of our teachers, Mr. T, uh, from my school. He donated a cucumber plant and a mint plants, um, and they're doing really well. And then we have some strawberries, and I got the little plants off of Taobao, and they're doing really well. We, ha we started with one bucket, now we have two, um, and they gave us quite a few strawberries over the summer. And here we got these peppers that we started from scratch from the seed and you can see the peppers growing and some green peppers in the back Dif different plants but they were in the same pocket the same bag more tomatoes and there's actually a small tomato growing and then um, some weeds <laughs> as well so we started the garden because we had done it before actually a couple of years ago uh, and we liked that and now I got inspired again by one of our teachers at the school I work at, Mr. T, because he started our school garden and we got compost set up and we started to plant seeds and grow all kinds of things and especially composting got me really excited at first. So I started composting and then we also started to grow some plants and fruits and vegetables. So here I have garlic water that we made with some yeah, garlic pulp and then water and I'm spraying that on the um, peppers because there were a lot of bugs crawling around and I heard first we used um, dish soap but I want to make it more biological so there's garlic now and that's supposed to work as well. So. Having a garden in the city in a like apartment complex on the fourth floor it comes with challenges because we don't have a lot of space like not a lot of space for different plants to grow and veggies to grow and we have small pots so there's also not a lot of space for the roots of the plants to grow in which makes it harder for the plants to really grow and thrive so that is the biggest challenge i think 
and also well we love to travel so it's difficult to find somebody who can take care of the plants the way we like them to care take care of those as uh, when we're gone when we went to Russia because we recently went to Russia to uh, travel on the Trans-Siberian um, we set up a watering system for our garden and actually about two-thirds of uh, one third of our garden died and so this is a very simple water system you take like a coke bottle and you screw on a, a faucet and then this has a little uh, uh, I guess dial that you can decide how much water will drip out and so I'd set this all up before we left for Russia because we were going to be gone for two weeks and uh, I told the IE make sure the bottles have water and uh, when we came back all our plants had been moved back out into the beating sun and the bottles were mostly empty and for the most part we lost a lot of our uh, plants we had a pumpkin uh, not a pumpkin, we had a tomato plant, which is actually still out there. It died over the course as it just continued to die. Um, and then we also had a potato. We had a potato plant that was about about up to here on me from the, from the base. It was a tall uh, potato. I was hoping to get like one or two potatoes out of it. but um, So we had planted the potato into the ground or into a pot. And uh, that had rotted away and then it kind of caved in on itself. So we lost that one. But the strawberries survived. Our weeds survived. Uh, and our pepper survived. We had some mint that survived. And unfortunately, our cucumber uh, survived. But the unfortunate part is it hasn't actually bared any fruit. Um, so our, our tomatoes, some of them survived, some of them died. It was, uh, yeah, can't travel when you have a garden. So <laughs> that's a problem. What I really like about growing some fruit and veggies is that it gives you a feeling of like, well, you achieved something. You grew something all the way from nothing. And with the composting, like sometimes there's weeks where we're very busy with work and we don't get to use all the veggies or fruits in our fridge. And instead of throwing it away, um, I put it in my composting and then I can, well, after a few months, I can use that back onto my plants. So then it's like that it didn't go to waste for no reason. So this is just like juice. Yeah, fruit scraps. Some I think it's some watermelon and some watermelon dragon fruit. Okay. Yeah, so now let's get the worms. <laughs> Where the excitement comes in. Well, it's just when you open that box. So, put it on my gloves, guess. Yeah, so I don't touch like the worm food <laughs> with my bare hands. Here we go. I think they're on this side because this is where I last fed them. I think it's so cool. Like I said, it's super fascinating. Look how tiny these are. Oh yeah. <laughs> Any of the food scrapes that they didn't finish, I'll take out. And also, there's a lot of cardboard in there actually. So I take that out. Okay, now. I see there's not a lot of uh, cardboard left yet, so I'm gonna first put in some cardboard as bedding, which they will also decompose. Um, because they will eat this too, and it will help keep the compost a bit drier. Otherwise, it will be too wet if I just put the vegetables in, especially this with the, like the watery fruit. Now I'm going to put in some coffee, coffee grind that I've been collecting. And here I have granite eggshell, like super fine shell powder it should be smaller but if you can you get it smaller make it smaller it's for the grit the ph so it doesn't get too acid and i'll sprinkle it over the and then it's really important that like you just cover this new batch of food up really well with the compost because if you don't, if you leave the fruit, like the food exposed, you'll get a lot of fruit flies. So we 
fun. Yes. You have the worm composting, yeah. which is really exciting. Mm-hmm. I've never really known how to do compost in a city, but this yeah. is really cool the to see. The vermicomposting? Vermicomposting. Yeah. And then you have one compost, which is not worms. No, that's regular that? composting. It's just cause yeah. called composting. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, <laughs> and what, what's, um, like, what's the difference? So the difference is that this, the other compost, is decomposes on itself. So it's yeah. a longer process because there's no worms eating your food scrapes. It just has to decompose, like rot and break down all the way to compost and dirt. Mm. So that takes longer um, than the worms. It's basically the difference. Yeah. But other than that, it's quite similar. And it's not that difficult no is it? anybody yeah. can do it if you yeah. yeah if you have a box drill some holes in it so if it's too wet that water can drain out of it put a box underneath it yeah obviously to fill the catch it and then you just make sure you add enough cardboard or uh, newspaper no magazines yeah. and your food scrapes your kitchen scrapes cool. and then yeah, yeah then you get your, eventually you get your yeah. your your compost just mix it up every now and then to air it and like stir it around yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's fascinating.